So last night, all the boys met up at a campsite not too far from the lake complex. We had a lovely barbecue, we set a few gazebos up and the plan was that we were all going to be in one place ready to get to the gates first thing. We've headed down to Bluebell Lake, we all sat outside waiting at the gate, it's six o'clock in the morning, we're buzzing to get started. On this occasion we've got no lake book, no swims booked or anything like that. We're turning up just like an average day to get angler, we're going to try and find ourselves a swim and hopefully get on a few fish and try and catch some. Yeah, I'm really excited about the fishery here because it's completely different to the fishery in Germany. Uh, a lot of anglers or carp fishermen, uh, yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> I am hoping to get on sandline. Whether I do or not will be a different situation. But fingers crossed, if not, I imagine there'll be one swim around the complex I can jump on, but um, yeah, sandline is the aim. Well, me and Lewis have already discussed the plans back home and our plan for the week is to target Mallard and try and build as big a hit of fish as we can over the week. I'm really hoping to get on King A because it holds, I think, over 10 40s, 40 30s, and loads of back up 20 pounders. Lee Birch, one of our consultants, is down now and he's running the bailiff, so I'm sure he'll put us, put us straight as soon as we get there. So, fingers crossed for a 40 pound common. We would be splitting up across the complex and fishing all the different lakes Bluebell has to offer and would be in the same boat as the average UK day ticket angler. Bluebell hosts a whole range of fishing from runs waters and higher stock lakes like Mallard and Bluebell through to the slightly more challenging Swan and the famous Kingfisher Lake, the latter being where Tommy, Mikey and myself had decided to plot up for the week. We've had a wander around this morning and I've opted to fish Kingfisher Lake. I've bucketed a swim in a nice quiet little corner that I'm really happy with. I've seen a few bubbling and I've sort of got a few options to go with. Don't know if I'm going to be here all week, I'll let the fish tell me what to do, but as a starting point I'm really happy. So now I'm going to get the gear out of the van and get sorted. No pressure. Six nights of total pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I didn't have any preconceived ideas before coming here. Sort of had it in my head that I wanted to swim that can cover a lot of water, a main bulk of water, central area. And I know for a fact that they uh, pass through here quite a lot. So I'm happy. I'm not going to do anything too severe for 24 hours. A few zigs I reckon, maybe a couple of singles here and there. Worst thing I could do is pole baiting straight away. So I'm going to um, yeah, go with the zigs I think. Been doing a few bites on the zigs. See how it goes. I've chosen to go on Kingfisher this week along with Tommy and Mikey. I'll be trying to document their week, but I have dropped in a peg which it doesn't exactly scream spring. It's it's pretty deep out there. However, there is a, a bit of a bonus spot and that's a, a lovely little margin spot. Mark Vusen's come over from Germany. He's bought his underwater cameras and my goal for the week, no matter what sort of size of fish it is, what fish it is, I just really want to get that camera in there and try and get a bite in front of that camera. So I'm going to get the rod sorted now, get set up and um, yeah, see if we can get a rig in. Whilst the boys got sorted over on Kingfisher, Alfie and Lou were having a good walk around Mallard, looking for signs of fish. They planned to fish together as a team for the week, so getting on some fish early doors was going to be imperative. So we've just finished our second lap of the lake and people are just starting to wake up. When we did our first lap, people were still in their bivvies. We got here very early, it was about seven o'clock. A lot of the bivvies were still zipped up and we didn't have the chance to talk to many people. So as such, it was a little bit difficult to find out where the fish were coming from and generally how the lake was fishing in certain areas. We had a really good look about, looked in a lot of areas just to try and see signs of fish showing. And to be honest, they're pretty spread out, pretty spread out. So what we've done, we've taken a look at the weather, how things are gonna change, including the wind, the temperature, and the swims that we first stopped in, um, we've dropped a bucket in them and the, the two gents who are in there, they're leaving later on today. So we've got a day to wait, but it gives us longer to look at the lake. And at the moment, that's where we feel the most confident to get a bite. So we're gonna wait for that. And then, yeah, once they're gone, we're gonna get fishing and fingers crossed, we've made the right decision for the week ahead. 
Seb had chosen Sand Martin for the week, and being the only one of the lads to be tackling the lake, there was no distractions as he set about getting his rods into position. I'd be lying if I didn't say that turning up here this morning, I was a little bit dubious almost intimidated by the scenario that we've put ourselves in. You know, it's a very, very busy day ticket complex. Um, upon arrival, there was lots of people here. You know, certainly driving down the main track, there was bivvies everywhere and cars everywhere. And yeah, I'm well out of my depth. I've been for a walk around volley. We've walked around every single lake on the complex, including the tiny little wood pool, which seems to be lost and forgotten. And my spirits are very high, really high. The great thing about somewhere like this is, as long as it isn't completely stitched up, you do have choices. You know, there's opportunities and choices to make. And as much as I was dubious about coming somewhere like this, all of a sudden I'm quite excited. So yeah, I'm gonna go and prepare a couple of rods, get a little bit of bait knocked up, uh, and try and feed some fish and hopefully catch my first Bluebell Cup. So after a couple of hours, all the boys have began to settle into their week's fishing. Tommy, Wilson, and myself, had all got swims on one of the big fish waters, Kingfisher. Alfie and Lewis had plans of a big hit from Mallard. Seb tucked away on San Martin, whereas Alan and Ollie had no fixed abode, choosing to move around the complex for the week, starting on Bluebell Lake. Our German guests, Mark Vusen and Tilo, would be targeting Swan, a lake which had only done a handful of bites so far that year. However, this didn't put Vusen off, and he wasted no time in getting the first bite of the trip. How about this? Um, just basically an hour ago, I placed a rod on the really close in on the willow tree. Um, the swim we wanted to fish was taken this morning, so we just thought we'd give the back end of the lake a try. Single cultured hook bait and a bit of flake around it um, resulted in my first English fish. Here's Mark Vusen, he's made of magic. What do you think of your first Bluebell Cup, Mark? Yeah, it didn't take long. Hopefully it doesn't take too long for the next one. <laughs> nice work. That's a nice one, Al. What a lovely way to start. Great start to our trip to Bluebell. Beautiful mirror, caught right out of the edge in a quiet corner. As is always the case on these day ticket lakes, they can often be found tucked away. And it took, well, 10 minutes. This is the first one, I've actually got another one as well. Two quick bites. Welcome to Bluebell. Got one on the nose. 21. <laughs> Bite number two, a lovely, lovely old common. Size of the pecs on this thing, enormous. <sighs> lovely times. Just a little bit of uh, helping hand, reeling and under other zig in. Well, they're so close to the surface, probably within, well, certainly within the top two feet of water. And this one's kiting around all over the place. So a bit of help from my friends. It's been a, a long time coming, this bite. You were really patient there, mate. <clears throat> yeah, I've worked the swim and worked the swim and done half a bucket of spot cloud with some riser pellets in it and some scopex squid syrup, you know, really oiled up and stuff. And I've kept that going out with a dot spot. Every sort of 10 minutes, another, another dot spot, another dot spot. But it was starting to look like it wasn't going to happen. They kept sort of showing in the area. Um, and yeah, I've got a bite. I had literally minutes left before um, moving. The swim that I was gonna jump into tomorrow morning on Mallard has actually become available. So yeah, my bucket tricks worked. 
I can get into a half decent peg over on Mallard and I'll definitely do the night there and you know a percentage of tomorrow and see how it goes. If it's fishing well, I'll stay put. If not, I'll be off on an adventure somewhere. Oh, expert netting. Well, it will come good in the end. Um, as I said, kind of long overdue, especially with the numbers of fish that were sort of showing over the area. But yeah, perseverance paid off. I can head off now, have a big smile on my face to Mallard and drop on there for the night. Um, what just happened? Just got three rods out, two on a zig, one on a single. Uh, not a lot was happening, and then I see three in short succession. Two short, one long, reeled in the single, chucked it short to where I sort of see the two fish bosh. Um, it was out there. Three minutes, four minutes maximum. Single, single pop up. <laughs> well, I can't quite believe it to be honest. I've been fishing about an hour or so. Started seeing a few fish bosh, recast, reeled in one of the rods, recast it, single hook bait to where they were showing. It's gone within three minutes. 41 pounds, eight ounce of Kingfisher Common. Thank you, man. I did get it. Get in. And this is the successful rig that has just caught me that incredible 41 pound common. Uh, this is my sort of go-to rig when I'm turning up at a venue uh, that I haven't fished before and I don't really know what's out there. What I didn't want to do was make sort of 20, 30 casts in a swim that there was clearly fish already present in. And this rig allows me to cast sort of anywhere really and without knowing what's actually out there on the bottom of the lake, 99% of the time I'm adamant I'll be fishing. There's a couple of reasons why I choose to fish this rig over I'd say a trod rig or a stiff hinge rig. One being that I can get away with fishing my favourite leg clip setup. I love a leg clip and will use one wherever possible. I just think the hooking potential is so much better. I'm in direct contact with a lead as opposed to with a trod it would be sliding up and down the line. The reason I choose to fish a fang gyro hook is basically just because it's a hell of a lot easier than messing about with quick link swivels etc. And also with the hook being attached directly to the swivel it makes it a much stronger rig. Secondly, the long boom section is a little bit different from the norm you know. Um, again, when I cast out, not knowing what's out there on the lake bed, coupled with a critically balanced hook bait, I'm confident that when I do cast out, if I would land in gravel, silt, even light weeds, I will be fishing 99% of the time. I also like a long, supple hook link over, say, a stiff material. Not only will the soft, supple boom section lay perfectly over any contours that are out there, but I also just think it aids with hooking potential, you know? The long hook link gives the fish enough time to sort of take in the hook bait, move away before tightening up to the lead and nailing them. To tie this rig, I will first take my size 4 fang gyro hook. I'll then cut a small section of shrink tube and thread it down the hook all the way to the swivel. The shrink tube not only neatens up the rig, but it also creates the perfect aggressive angle that I'm looking for. I'll then take a lighter, hold a flame to the shrink tube, which will just shrink it down perfectly to the hook and swivel. I'll then thread on my bait screw, followed by a large tungsten hook bead, which will hold everything in place. 
Next, I take a long section of armor link hook link. The length that I'll end up fishing it often varies, but on average, I'm probably looking at around 15 to 16 inches. I'll then tie the armor link hook link to my fang gyro hook with a four turn grinner knot, and at the other end of the hook link, I'll tie a simple loop knot. I will then thread on a tungsten anti-tangle sleeve and add a bit of putty to the hook end, which will critically balance my hook bait. Then all that's left to do is screw on my hook bait of choice, which in this instance is a 12mm Scopex Squid yellow pop-up. And that's it, as simple as that. A very easy rig to tie and my go-to rig when I'm casting at showing fish and I want to get that all-important quick bite. Well, we finally got in the swim we wanted to. We were really patient because as I mentioned earlier, we wanted to make sure with a week ahead of us, we were going to get the right spot. And it looks like that patience has paid off pretty quickly because the rods have been out probably about an hour. We started off with a few solid bags because we didn't have that long to, to get a bit of bait out before it was dark. And yeah, one of the solid bags cast the wall showing fishes ripped off. I'm certainly not complaining about waiting now. You was earlier, big time. <laughs> Number one, it's a fish. Oh, carp number one. Lovely little mirror carp. Awesome little scale pattern of him. Not the biggest carp in the pond by any any stretch, but we're off the mark, and I'm really happy with him. So I let this one get back on his way, and let's get number two in the net. Good morning. A solid bag approach last night certainly paid off because all three of my rods went. Nothing too big. I say mid double was the biggest of the three. We set our alarms, me and Lou, for six o'clock this morning, ready for sort of just after first light so we can really start getting into things. But the problem is at the minute there's a really big fog and we can barely see a quarter of the way across the lake. So we're going to get up, have a little bit of breakfast, get a few things sorted, and then wait for that fog to clear. And then today's a the day we can start getting three rods on a spot, introducing a bit of bait and hopefully start building a hit of fish. And there we go. A very nice example of a mallard cup. Not the biggest one in the pond, but my biggest one of a few fish so far. This one rattled off this morning just as Lou was playing one. I'm sure there's plenty more to come. And if they're as beautiful as this, and I certainly won't be complaining, I'm looking forward to, to getting three rods out shortly after the fog clears. And fingers crossed, we'll start the week off with a few fish and it continue in that fashion. Well, that's me done here, Alf. I'm bored already, mate. Didn't take too long. <laughs> I dumped my bucket of flake, put three rods over the top of it and they didn't come in. Boys managed to nick a couple of bites, which was really nice to see this morning. Alex came around yesterday, we had a lovely barbecue. We did, lovely bit of food. Yeah, nice but evening, now, few um, beers. Alfie don't drink tea or coffee. Lou's very busy weird. getting his rods set up and this has stayed extremely dry this morning so I'm going to bid you farewell. See you Good later, luck mate. boys, I know you're you. super gassed to get a load of bait yeah, out there definitely, and mate, definitely. get your rods on the spot. Same for you Lou, big ups bruv and um, I'll see you later on. Alright Alf. See you mate. Let's get to work. Let's do it mate. Earlier that same morning, whilst Alf and Lou were on pest control duty, over on Kingfisher, one of the A-team had graced the bank. Where are we, Wilson, and what's happened? So it is, oh, I don't know, quarter past six, Monday morning, the morning after the first night, and Birchie has gone and pulled it out of the bag, and he's got a 42 pound common, I believe, called Jay's Common. So we've come round, Dan and Ollie are here to do a bit of video and film. I'm going to get it out and have a look. Buzzing for him. Have a look. I 
lovely old character from Bluebell Lake this morning. Part of a double take. I put the small one back, but this one was well worth the picture. Lovely old fish. One peck on one side and uh, one eye on the other. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that over there. I wish I had another camera, but Seb is currently fighting a swan. Okay, so the underwater camera is in. Um, I've dropped a rig in there. My heart's in my mouth because the spot looks prime. I know, I know fish get in there and feed. My only kind of doubts is whether they spook off the camera because it's, it's really clear down there and clearly they know this lake like the back of their hand. They're gonna know that something's different in there. And that, you know, the camera's not a small bit of kit. Um, however, we're kind of approaching that time. The sun's kind of starting to swing round. It's getting on in the afternoon and it's really beating down into that corner. So Lee tends to say that they fish get in there on the sun, which is about now. Um, yeah, so I guess we see what happens and hopefully something happens in front of this camera. I did manage to bag three fish last night on the solid bags. At the moment, I now feel the most confident I have done on the session. Spent a little bit of time this morning working with a marker float, making sure to find the perfect spot, found a nice little gravel patch in a decent depth, but I've also managed to put out a good, good bed of bait just because of the numbers of fish in here. There's a lot of fish, they're packed fish, and the, the idea I was thinking is that when they come in, I want to hold them. So they're, they're certainly not afraid of a show. They're dispersed all over the lake at the moment. I'm just waiting for that chance for when they come close into the swim, find that spot, and fingers crossed we'll, we'll get the first bite over the baited area. So the bait mix I've been using over the course of the week is pretty much exactly the same I use whenever I'm fishing particle and high stock venues, and it consists of three ingredients, couldn't be simpler, hemp, two open scope of squid boilies, and a bit of the golden grain sweet corn, and I have complete and utter confidence in it. <laughs> Another small one, Elf. I can't just help because I've still got the lead on, haven't I? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this one throws a little bit of a spanner in the works. The sun came out earlier on, the clouds have just gone undercover now, but we did see a few cruising on the top. So what I did, got an adjustable zig ready because it is quite deep out there. I positioned the zig just a foot below the surface. It's only been on, well, out in the water 30 minutes tops. And obviously with an adjustable zig, absolute screamer with the lead being fixed to the bottom. And this fella was on the end. What a lovely scaly mirror. Oh, I'm certainly happy with this one, but we we're all happy with a baited spot, but I think maybe until this evening, zigs could be the way forward.
And there we go, another very foggy morning, but another morning bike to go along with it. This time, it's the best one so far. A lovely 22 pound fully scale carp. This one fell over a better bait this time. What a way to start the day. <laughs> if there's more like this to come, I'm gonna be one very happy angler. I was trying to get the full story, but you don't want to talk about it, do you? <laughs> what? what? Well, I caught the swan like swan. <laughs> the swan like swan apparently is um, what we in Germany call an arschloch. <laughs> <laughs> What's that mean? He's an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> and why is he we had an asshole? account out, didn't go along too well, and he decided to take revenge on me by Taking a proper dump on my eye, <laughs> like <laughs> elephant size, <laughs> but undoubtedly the colour doesn't lie. It's Swan White. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Swan Lake. Swan. <laughs> how how do you find day ticket fishing so far? It's definitely completely different to the fishery in Germany. <laughs> so politely put. <laughs> but yeah, it's a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's um. <laughs> I, mean, like, I hate fishing so far. I wish I stayed at home. Yesterday we arrived here at the Swan Lake and we want to fish a particular swim. But there was two English guys. They want to stay here up to Tuesday. Um, so Mark and myself goes on the other end from the lake where we yeah, just flick a couple of uh, traps out in the, right on the edge under some yeah, snags and trees and stuff. And Mark and myself <laughs> go to a little sleep because we're really, really tired. And I think it was 20 minutes where Mark's rod ripped off and yeah, he catches his first fish from the Swan Lake. Proper one with a nice mirror with big scales on it. And yeah, after this fish we uh, take a look to the swim where we want or actually want to fish the whole week and the English guys are gone so we put all the stuff together and move into this spot and start the fishing on this area of the lake. You know I've just come from the other side of the lake for this. <laughs> oh. I knew it didn't feel right. I right? well, leave him, I want to fight like. That counts, mate. How big is it? Talk to me, Tom, what's happening? Just <sighs> waited three days for a bite. <laughs> After countless shows, 30s, 40s, all over. Finally got that bite on a 10 foot zig. It's a massive boom. <laughs> <laughs> You're very reserved about all this, Tom. Yeah, it's because you lot are there. I'm gonna cry in a minute. I'll cry with you, mate. Come on. I thought that was it. Perfect zig bite. Drop back. Wound down. Yeah. 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 It's Wednesday morning and it's time for me to, to pull off Bluebell now. Uh, fished here again last night, got here about 8.30, something like that, just before it got dark. <clears throat> and uh, lost one on a zig, disappointingly. Got them taking floaters. Um, yeah, just spent yesterday all day trying to get them taking floaters. Fished on San Martin for six or seven hours, had one opportunity. Um, yeah, got back here, got taking floaters, um, sporadically. Uh, so I decided to fish the zigs underneath them and yeah, it did get a bite but it fell off. Um, now about summed up my day really. Um, so then dropped down onto the bottom and by sort of one o'clock in the morning I drilled my rods in. Um, I'd had six more big bream and I just needed some sleep, especially if I'm going to give it 100% today, you know, and try and get one. Um, yeah, got up again this morning about six, uh, put the rods back out on the bottom and had four more bream in quick succession. Um, get amongst these carp at the moment. Um, 
brought the bottom bait rods back in, come off the squid and went up onto the zigs again. But um, yeah, nothing, another few spots of cloud over the top of them. Ollie lost a little one, um, so he didn't even manage to catch one out of his little corner last night. So it's time to get on the move. I'm gonna go and freshen up, uh, get rid of some rubbish, and go exploring. The rods are all prepared, I'm super organized, so I've just got to come across some, some feeding fish, really. I'm um, looking forward to later on though, going to head over to Mallard, going to meet up with all the boys, have a barbecue and a beer and stuff, and a catch up. But yeah, it's Wednesday, got another full day of it, the weather looks good, I'm going fishing. There we go, here's my reward for this morning's surface fishing. It's a lovely warm day, a bit overcast, but the lake's flat calm and you can see loads of carp on the top and they're certainly up for a float rod too. I had to persevere to have this one, but finally he took it and what a reward. Alan's joined me and Louie's in the swim trying to bag one off the top as well and later on the boys are going to come around for a bit of a social and a barbecue, so it's looking like it's going to be a really nice day. What's happening, Alfie? The sun's come out and the cut will come up on the top. Me and Lou are doing a little bit of teamwork here. Um, I'm fishing on the top, Lou's fishing just under the surface on an adjustable zig and we'll dot spotting over the top of each other. And I've just nicked one off the top and Lou's just nicked one just under the surface. So both methods are working. And we've got a couple in the net behind us, we'll get them out. They're really nice ones as well, but they're still taking it, so we're going to get the rods out. Twenty-five, four. Not too bad for a half hour's float of fishing, eh, Lou? No, mate, not too bad. We started seeing them cruising on the top, it went flat calm. We've had really strong wind since we've been here, but it's the first time, other than in the evenings, when it's been perfectly flat. We've got a few slicker floaters out on the top and they started taking. Lou went in with the approach of adjustable zigs fish just under the surface, and that's his reward there. And I had this one straight off the top on a little trim down 12 on scope, it's been pop up. Lovely times. I can see his hook bait. That was it, that was an ejection, keep it there. Yeah. Alf and Lou had really started to get amongst them on a range of different tactics too. However, this hadn't gone unnoticed and wasn't long before the vultures moved in. This is the look of a bitter man. <laughs> two, um, two intruders have turned up into his swimlet. I've only been to the toilet and come back. <laughs> Absolute poachers. And it's my rod. Is Lou nicked your rod as well? Yeah. Blair and Ollie been struggling and... Um, <laughs> Alf's the one on the back. <laughs> They're spawning out mixers. And all these um, waist deep and Alf swim. <laughs> Trying to catch them off the top. Well, Alfie left his uh, float rod unattended for all of 30 seconds, so quickly grabbed it, waded out a little bit. And uh, yeah, about three casts later, I managed to nick one. So he can have his rod back now. Well, we thought the float of fishing for the day might be over with as the wind picked up and it made it a little bit difficult to fish on the surface, but we had a window of opportunity as it calmed down a bit and this was my reward. A mental looking mirror cup. So far, Alan had been struggling really. He'd been trying different tactics in different lakes, but without much luck. However, a surface opportunity on San Marino was to change. Is 
outside. Seb. Yeah. Well, it's one of the hardest float bites I've ever had to work for. Spent a good six or seven hours yesterday on this lake. Been back on here today for an hour and a half, two hours. It's my first opportunity and yeah, I managed to set the hook. Unlike yesterday where I was in such shock that I'd had a bite, I just watched it take the hook back and didn't do anything. The pressure seems to be changing. The fish seems to be feeling a bit more confidently. I've just put three dot spots on that wind, top of that wind line and they're actually having a few. Um, it wasn't until yesterday, just before dark, they started feeding like they are at the moment. It's hardly like super aggressive, but yeah, maybe things are on the up. First two you caught today? First two bites I've had since I've been here till the night. Finally! Got some floater rotor action. Yeah, it's been a lot of rise of pellet and slicker floaters going, a lot of walking, but eventually my little whittle down Scopex squid wafter, it's got me a couple of bites and I'm buzzing. Second one of a real quick flurry of activity. It looks like the rain's coming in and they just properly got on the munch. Proper grafted, moving around here, there and everywhere, chasing them really. Um, yeah, it can become quite stressful, a little bit demoralizing, but this is exactly what I was hoping for. Yeah, good opportunity came along, made the most of it. Two quick bites, two stunning bluebell carp. What are you doing, Dan? Cooking. I've nipped out the Tesco's and gone and got a feast for the guys. So I'm currently grilling halloumi, making some burgers, and being head chef to feed these athletes. <laughs> <laughs> Give us that impression of once more, Ralph. Right. How'd it go? How'd it work Going to the net, this one. Um, what happened? <laughs> do you know what happened? I actually went to get some food for myself and it just ignited. The social had actually been a little bit anti-social so far. We decided we would all reel our rods in, meet in Alfie and Lou's swim to enjoy a barbecue, a few drinks, and have a good old catch up. Kingfisher has been frustrating to say the least the last couple of days. Um, I think Mikey's pulling his hair out. I'm not as bad, but pretty frustrated at the moment. Um, not only has nothing taken a bait on the underwater camera, but when I'm putting my rods out at night, I'm not getting any luck either. Um, and then during the days, I'm, I'm, I'm off filming. Um, however, I have dedicated a few hours each day to watching the underwater camera, and I haven't had a bite, but a really, really big common came in. It, it took two mouthfuls. It just sort of drifted over my pop-up. 
and the opportunity was gone and that was it. Um, then the second day that I put them in, I'm sure the fish were spooking off it. I was just kind of seeing these shadows out the back of the camera, but they just weren't getting close to it. And I, I feel that they just didn't feel conf confident to come into that spot and feed while that camera was in. So I've uh, bit the bullet, I've taken the camera out, I've put some bait in, I know they've visited since the camera's been out and fed on this bait and um, yeah now it's time to try and get one not in front of the camera and just get a fish under my belt so uh, I'm about to put a rod in and uh, fingers crossed something happens. Well Kingy's turned out to be much harder than I expected it to be. I know it was going to be hard, I knew it wasn't going to be no walk in the park but it really is granite. I could not get a bite to save my life. I've worked my absolute socks off changing from zigs to bottom baits rods in the margin, fishing up to snags, all sorts, and I've rung so many changes and just can't make it happen. And this morning as well, they were showing probably 80 yards, 90 yards in front of me, but waking their way down the lake, they were fizzing over the Lees Bay and no one's had a bite. It's fishing absolutely rock hard, but we're midway through the week now. I'm gonna keep on keeping on and see if we can get one. This quiet corner's really produced the goods for me this week. Sort of swim that most other people would ignore. And uh, although it was quiet for a couple of days, it's half back in here again today. And it wouldn't surprise me if I have a chance at another one. Lovely carp. Ollie's bluebell corner had been consistently providing him with action all week. And once again, fishing in the edge with a handful of squid flake was proving to be a winner. Corner still producing the goods. It's a lovely one. Well, my quiet corner is still producing carp. It's freezing cold, northerly winds, and they're getting stacked up in there. This one was caught about a rod length from the bank. A normal rod length, not half a wrap, about 12 feet. Lovely old carp. Alfie giving it the big end, saying his lines are all tight in a spot. Mate, if it went on for an infinite amount of time, I'd never meet. I'm going to see what yours are like, Lou. <laughs> oh, oh. it's because his rods are closer together. Look at them it's lines, Al. It's a buzz bars, mate. It's all is that what it is? It's the buzz bars. Yeah. Yeah. And they definitely meet, mate. <laughs> <laughs> they cross over at some point, do you reckon? Oh, yeah. On the spot. No, nah, that's railway lines, mate. No, it's not. You could fit a double decker bus between yours. Bigger buzz bars, mate. It's all an, it's an illusion. I'm not having it. I'm going to bed. Give me a beer. Yeah, give me a beer. Oh my god. This is uh this is the front room. This is where I plan to get a few things established. I've just ordered the pool table, which is gonna go in this corner over here. And then funnily enough the line from here to the back wall is the same distance for the darts. Um, so we're going to get a darts board on the back there, fit a poker table in over there, I should imagine. Um, fridge is packed up, unfortunately, so the beers are a bit warm. The fridge not work? No. What, the work. Jet Blaze little generator thing? Not powerful enough. Wow, this is... You've got it good. I'm just like, in a little Titan hide, and you've got it... Cushy, as they say. Cushy. We're a bit inside the camera, innit? 
it's finally come good. I sat in front of that camera for a couple of days, nothing happened. I took the camera out, I saw the fish feeding on it, I left into it because I had to film, and today I thought I'm dedicating the day to uh, trying to catch one, and I have, so I'm happy. And there she is, my reward for kind of sticking it out in the margin. I did give up on the camera. I dearly, dearly wanted to catch one in front of it, but they just knew it was there. So I decided to take it out, give myself the best chance possible to try and catch one. And it didn't take all that long. First day, which I really stuck, sat behind them rods and waited for it to go. And sure enough, it went. And I have made up with that, 32 pound. Kingfisher common. Yeah. yeah, fish in. So we're heading into the final night now and today has been the most productive day of the whole week so far. This morning I was lucky enough to have four bites in a very short amount of time, followed by another four bites staggered across throughout the day. Unfortunately I lost a few of those fish just due to hook pulls. <laughs> what can you do i was on a good run and then a few fell off hopefully i can replicate the same thing tomorrow morning because like i said there's a very short um, window of opportunity where they were feeding and i did have a lot of bites so i'm looking forward to tomorrow morning even better if it comes earlier i'm not going to complain we've got probably another couple of hours until the sun goes down but things are looking good things came together on the final day and hopefully we can just snare a few more before we have to go home so my main method of approach across this week has been fishing a lot of particle hemp, sweet corn and scopex squid boilies. So as the fish are low to the deck, grubbing around, slowly sifting through the small particles, my rig of choices remain the same and that is a low line pop-up rig in the shape of the fang gyro rig. Size 6 barbless fang gyro and match the hatch 12 more scopex squid pop-up to match the feed that I'm dot spotting out. And that's certainly done the business for me for the fish over the course of this week. I'm using a short hook link because the bottom is really firm out there. I don't need long and because they're only slowly moving between the particles, I want the fish to come into contact with the lead as soon as that hook back goes into their mouth. My intention today was always to get across to Kingfisher. Um, it's the big fish water, you know, Tom's fish, incredible. Um, Birchie's fish, incredible. Uh, it's got a fantastic stock of fish. Um, I didn't want to set my stall up there for the week, but yeah, I did want to have a crack at it, you know, just for 24 hours, and, and that's where I am now. Um, on the way here, got sidetracked massively around Bluebell, found uh, big uh, areas of coloured water, dropped in there, uh, two different areas. Um, and had a go for half hour, 45 minutes, but again to no avail. These fish are definitely proving to be very, very tricky. Um, but yeah, on Kingfisher now, um, Dan had one this afternoon, which was amazing. Um, he's worked so hard this week, so it's great to see him finally nick a bite. And yeah, I've got my rods in position. I'm fishing three rods tight on a spot. Very, very cliche sort of bluebell Kingfisher type tactics. Um, I've also got a fourth rod out. Um, Put a bit of work into this one, you know, actually utilize the bait boat. Warning, place all switches in their up position and lower the throttle. Far too many buttons on here for me, mate. Love a bit of technology, don't Alex, well. your boat's amazing. I just needed a tutorial. Ah. Oh, that's it. Oh. We're off. <laughs> <laughs> if in doubt, flick all the switches. It would have been impossible uh, to, to cast it and, and drove the bait boat across to an area. 
that's definitely been turned over. There's sort of bits of sand and gravel and even little broken muscle shells and stuff. So got a rig on there as well. Going into the night full of optimism because um, you just never know. It only takes one bite to catch something really, really special. Um, but for now, I'm going to get out of these wet clothes. Um, I'm hoping I can sway the lads into getting a takeaway because my food supplies are running really, really low. Uh, grab a bite to eat with the boys and just maybe tonight will be the night I get an early night. I doubt it, but wishful thinking and all that. Hopefully, we will have to report in the morning. Go put them on though. So what? Number ten. Go on, Elf. Well, this little fella certainly proves a superstition. Real. I was just I was just on the phone to my girlfriend, looking up at the tree at this pigeon and it just poked on the floor. I said, good job it didn't poop on me. Little did I know there was another one right next to it and it hit me right on the shoulder. And then 30 seconds later, the rod went off. So it certainly is a good luck charm. And this beautiful little carp was on the end. Certainly not complaining, it puts me to double figures. Thanks, fella. Back you go, mate. What are you saying, Elf? I'm saying I'm really happy and that I hope things continue tonight. That was ducks by the way. Maybe another bird <laughs> Yeah, maybe, maybe. Cast, mate. Yeah, after five nights blanking on the swan lake, I decided to move to another lake, to the bluebell lake. Uh, yeah, I see a lot of fish right on the edge, and uh, I feed, I think, 20 or 30 uh, bodies, 50 mil scopex squid, 50 millimeter, and yeah, I used uh, a 20 mil wafter and this. English common come over and took the hook bait. Amazing fish, a real English one, I think. And yeah, my first for the social here. Amazing. Last fish for Ollie. Been a lovely week, flitting about. I've ended it back up on Bluebell and it's been kind to me. It's given me four fish in the last few hours. So yeah, time to go home and have a wash. Well, certainly a lovely way to end the trip. We've probably got two or three hours left now. Me and Lou have both managed to bag one on the final morning. Again, not the biggest characters in the pond, but absolute beautiful carp. Good end to the session, eh, Lou? Yeah, mate. Lovely way to see us out. Yeah, definitely. It's been a very enjoyable week. I'd love to do it again. I'm upset I've got to go home, really, but yeah, time to pack away, I think. Yeah. <laughs> certainly hasn't happened to me in this corner. I've hung it out for five nights now and they just haven't got in there in the numbers that I thought they were gonna was, and also was told by Birchie who was adamant they was gonna get in there but they just simply haven't. These carp really have got a mine of their own. So Birchie's going today. I'm gonna move around into where he was. He's got a lot more water. That swim commands a lot more water than my, this one I've been in does. I think I need it. A little recharge, a little change of scenery, and hopefully we'll get one. Fingers crossed. You alright?
No. What's happened, mate? Well, I've started packing my stuff up to move into Birch swim over on that bank. And they're now showing down here where I've had a rod for four days. I moved it last night and I've seen four shows in the last 10, 15 minutes. So now my head is completely I just don't know what to do, mate. Literally, I'm just going to wash my poles in the lake and drown my sorrows. Get a breakfast. Get another fry up, mate. <laughs> my trousers are falling down. <clears throat> really late night, very early start. Got up not long after four o'clock and I just dozed off, shattered. It's been a long week. And yeah, I've had a bite on Kingfish up. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go and land it or at least try to. What's happening, Mikey? Yeah, he's got one. He was just round there, I was just in Dan's swim. I just looked out, I just see something erupt on the surface, looked over and just see how I was lying going out to the fish and it looks like a good one. What a trip. It's been full of highs, been a few lows. We've struggled, we've caught some. Yeah, lots of mixed emotions. Um, personally, I've been here, there and everywhere. Gone as many times I've moved, visited lakes, looked for fish, gone and had a chat with the other lads. It's been exhausting to say the least, but finished it up on Kingfisher with a mega, mega carp. Fantastic social, I cannot wait for the next one with the boys. But what an unbelievable week's fishing I've just had on Mallard. Like, what a lake. I've never fished a place with such a high quantity of unbelievable looking carp. I've had some really fully, like some fully scaled ones, some with big apple slices, and the odd big common too. So it's been a fantastic week's fishing. I've managed to have a few as well, fishing on all types of methods. I caught them off the top, on zigs, and over the baited spot. And I can seriously say that it's been one of the most enjoyable fishing trips that I've been on. Highlight of the week, actually for me, has to be the 22 pound fully I had. It came quite early on in the week but simply for how it looks, it's probably one of the best looking carp I've ever caught, if not the best looking carp I've caught. One that's gonna take pride in my photo album of fish and that certainly stands out for me. My week's fishing has been really interesting. I started really well. Uh, usually when I get somewhere, the first 24 hours is the best for me. I think I perform best in that first 24 hours. And yeah, I nicked a couple of really quick bites and I had another couple of bites the following morning and then it dried up a little bit. Uh, so I decided I'd head over to Swan and uh, try and catch a real whacker and I went and fished next to Mark Vuson. Um, Mark had found the fish in a quiet corner, uh, there was a lot of big carp about so I dropped in next to him, got a couple of baits out st stealthily and I sat there for 36 hours with Mark and the fish absolutely made a monkey of us. You know, I fished really well but I've never felt further away from catching the carp as I did as being sat there. So it was time to go and find some carp that were catchable. Um, so I came back to Mallard, the weather had changed, the fish had moved back into the quiet corner and I very quickly nicked three bites and a following bite the following morning. Um, so yeah, I finished up with about 
10 fish, I think, uh, give or take. Um, and yeah, I had a fantastic week. My highlight of the week would, well, it's a no-brainer for me. Um, my highlight happened in the first 10 minutes of getting a rod out, to be honest with you. I turned up in the swim, see a few fish bosh, uh, got some singles out whilst I set up base camp. See another few fish bosh to the right, two at once in fact, and that was enough for me to warrant well, really in a rod, casting a single to him. And it went within three minutes. And not only did I catch a carp, I caught uh, one of Kingy's famous 40 pounders. Um, what better highlight could there be? Bluebell, the complex as a whole is incredible. Um, it passed all expectations. The lakes, uh, immaculate, the stock, everyone knows about the stock, it speaks for itself. But um, I think the best thing for me was the, the lovely welcome we got from Tony and all the staff and Bayliss and whatnot. Um, and the local anglers, to be honest, we, uh, I wasn't expecting this. I thought it'd be a bit more, uh, what's the word, a bit more hostile maybe. Maybe it's a bit arrogant of me to think that, but I thought it was day to get people coming and going all the time. I thought it'd be very, um, people doing their, doing their own thing and keeping themselves to themselves, but it's been far from that. On a social aspect, it's been the nuts. Like, I never get out with the boys from work. We don't get out enough together. To catch up with the boys and meet everyone is always, like, the best. I don't get to spend enough time with the lads. Um, we've all got busy jobs and just to get away and, and spend a few days with them on the bank, um, it's been fantastic. We've had a big barbecue on a Wednesday night, a few beers, and it's just really good to spend time with not only workmates, but also really good friends. It makes you really appreciate the work environment that we have and the people that work around you because um, there ain't another job like it. I've made a lot of new friends this week. Um, a lot of people I keep in contact with over social media and stuff. And yeah, that's been a bit of a highlight for me, just getting the opportunity to speak to people from all different walks of life that all share that same common interest of, of going carp fishing. It's been a great laugh. It's good to get out away from the work environment and um, it's been a great week fishing with the lads. Highlight of the week. Highlight of the week for me. Mikey's in. Well, I really didn't think it was going to happen. And just as I was packing away, rods on the deck, everything in the motor, it went. These carps certainly have made me work this week and I've not stopped putting in the effort. And thank God that I was finally rewarded. Buzzing. My highlight of the week was the bite I had five minutes ago when my rods were on the deck. <laughs> yeah, I've had loads of highlights, but yeah, that's the one that I, I thought it was over. I really did thought it was over, but as they say, it was written in the stars. <sighs> the social. The social. Highlight of the week um, for me, up until about five minutes ago was um, the sort of eight hours I did on San Martin. Incredibly difficult floater fishing, um, so much so that they basically wouldn't take any riser pellet or, or slicker floaters. I worked at it for six hours one day, missed one opportunity, went back the following day for a couple of hours. And yeah, that last half an hour of that two hour period, something changed and I managed to really get them feeding and nick a couple of bites. And, and that was my highlight. I hadn't dropped into a swim and got told how many wraps to fish out or I kind of did it myself. I created a situation myself and, and that meant a lot to me. But something superseded that. Five minutes ago, young Jordan is fishing around to the right of me. Um, this morning he caught a fish, his first carp from King Fisher, his first night here. And I was there to share that moment with him. I netted the fish, jumped in the lake, got it in the net, and it was uh, a real special moment. Mega, bro. Mega, mega. Well deserved. And to be fair, that was my highlight until he just went and caught the biggest fish in the lake. That's a proper one, son. That's a proper one, son. I'm 
so incredibly happy for him. All the boys came round, there was an immense buzz. Yeah, you're having these heads under his head. There he is! <laughs> Boom! Yeah, I'm proper smiling! <laughs> Great! Could have another one of them! And another! <laughs> And yeah, there he was with a £47 common and that has made it the most fantastic week.